Now that the Tesla Model Y long range dual motor is shipping readily at a starting price of $43,000 US, why on earth would anybody pay 75% more for this, the Tesla Model X? That's $75,000 US. Does this car still have a niche? Is it outdated? Is there somebody that this is intended for? I drive a Model Y, but for the moment I have my hands on this, a 2019 100D Model X, uh, which is essentially the equivalent of the dual motor long range that you can buy right now for $113,000 Canadian or $75,000 US. And I think I've got my head wrapped around what the three key differences are between this car and the Model Y. Firstly, if your need is for a six or seven person vehicle, then the X is your only real option in the Tesla world, and frankly, in the entire EV world. So Volvo's XC90 plug-in hybrid is a great option too, but it's not a full battery electric vehicle, it's a plug-in hybrid. Here in Canada and USA, we don't have the Mercedes or Nissan minivans of Europe, and the Rivian SUV is still a ways off. And sure, the Model Y has a seven seat configuration available, but let's be real and recognize that the Model Y's third row is really only viable for smaller children that are too big for a booster seat, but just small enough for the third row. So the Model X offers a bit more size. This particular car doesn't have the available six or seven seat configuration, but that is a common spec, especially the six seat configuration, which is very good for a family of five, because that way everyone gets some real space. Accessing the back is very reasonable, and the way the seats are anchored to the car just looks so elegant and modern. By the end of this video, if you think this is a well-prepared summary and you enjoyed it, please toss me a like or subscribe, and that'll help YouTube bring it to more people's attention. The second reason why you might prefer the X is if the access mode with these Falcon wing doors actually works for you. This was a controversial design choice, obviously born out of the fact that the car is wide. Uh, so Tesla's implementation of this was met with a myriad of technical problems at first. So if you think Tesla's problems with fit and finish were bad on the 3 and the Y, well on the Model X it was on a whole other level. That stuff is largely resolved by now, so I wouldn't worry about it too much, but your expectations shouldn't be too high. You might need to book a mobile service appointment once after taking delivery to make sure everything is up to snuff. The doors are incredibly complex, relying on tight tolerances and properly performing sensors all working in harmony to make these doors do what they do. You can see that the doors can take a different trajectory to open depending on where it has space, above or next to it. So early on there were these retrofits, redesigned seals and so on. Be really careful if you're looking at a used one especially. Since this door concept was so new, it was very unfamiliar for people and that gave people a lot of anxiety, rationally justified or otherwise, that they might be stuck inside. But if your use case is somehow not bothered by all this, then there are some pretty nifty advantages of having this type of door. Uh, for one thing, stepping in and out is really easy for kids or people with reduced mobility, especially as the car lowers when it's parked. If you trust the doors, you can feel confident that your kids won't smash other car doors in the parking lot because the opening and closing is always automatic. So plenty of disagreement still exists about this door and although it's good for some, the general consensus appears to have been that Tesla should put it to bed. And they did. The Model Y was initially rumored to come with this style of door, but that was nixed early on in favor of traditional doors. Elon Musk has tweeted that there is no refresh or update coming for Model X anytime soon. But for me, the most interesting footnote for this chapter in automotive history will be the fact that there exists another door construction that Tesla could have used for the Model X to achieve the same result, but they didn't. They could have gone with sliding doors like on a and I'm sure they would have done a pretty good job with it too. Sliding doors like on fans can open in the tightest of spots. They are safe, not like the ones that existed when I was a kid, which were totally slammable and quite dangerous. But the problem is man is the most unspeakable and divisive and sales destroying term that anybody could use. Nobody wants to be a man driver. And we can see that Tesla essentially reinvented the door only to avoid that stigma. This car looks and feels and drives like a and in all other respects, but these doors make it not a man. I know doors might seem like just one thing about a car, but they really are a large part of how you will interact with this car. So if it works for you, that's one reason why you might choose it over the Model Y. The third reason is the luxury. This is one incredibly luxurious car and the standout luxury feature for me is the air ride suspension. The Model S has this too. The three and the Y ride on regular springs and shocks, which are actually quite good at soaking up uneven pavement, but this is on a whole other level. Once you get used to it, you understand the difference when you get back into a regular suspension car. It just makes for a more pleasant ride while also giving you the possibility to choose your ride height. It helps for loading and unloading, it helps for getting in and out, and also with the snow, right? The next place where the luxury really shows is in the way the interior is appointed. 
The Model Y has an ultra modern minimalist look that really makes you rethink what it means to pilot a car. The Model X, however, has far more conventional controls, buttons for mirrors, buttons for the steering wheel adjustment, more screen space, driver specific info in the binnacle, vents that you can actually just adjust without having to do a triple sow towel with your fingers on the screen. And while I love the so-called vegan leather seats of the Y, these real leather seats in here are double stitched, soft, and they come with actual color choices besides just black and white. There's leather on the dash, there's leather on the trim pieces, there is Alcantara on the headliner and so on. Just touches that you will appreciate when you spend so much money on a car. And all of that translates into one more thing that you might be going for and that's the exclusivity. This car is a real head turner. It's got more classically good looking uh, body lines in the front end and the automatic doors just scream, look at me, I'm living in the year 3000. As for the Model Y, it's a pretty car, but before long, it's going to be nauseatingly common as the Model 3 already has become in some parts of California. The Model Y is lighter, it's more efficient, and it's got updated drive units, and it makes use of the latest and greatest Tesla battery technology. The Model X is taking on this role as the somewhat neglected and aging technology Tesla, but it's still a super exclusive car. Yes, it uses a 16850 style batteries, as do the Model S, uh, but I wouldn't consider the Model X behind the times at all. It should be behind the times, but since all of the other automakers are even further back with their battery technology, the X is still at the cutting edge, and it's the only viable option, as I said before, for a six or seven seater. I really think you don't have to worry much about rapid depreciation because there doesn't appear to be a major refresh uh, coming up right away. Uh, one of the thing about the Y is even though it's heavier and less efficient, it still has more range than the Model Y. And that's because it has a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack versus the 74 kilowatt hour in the Model Y. So about 25% more juice, even though you don't use it as efficiently. So you get 351 miles versus 316 miles in this Model X. For me, it will be really interesting to see how the next generation of Volvo and Mercedes SUVs really start to wade into this car's space. Most of the other automakers seem fixated on the high volume subcompact or the super popular compact SUV range. So what do you think? Who will be the major competition for Tesla to watch out for in 2021 or sooner? If you or someone you know is interested in the Model X or Model Y or any Tesla for that matter, please use a Tesla referral link uh, use one of your friends or use mine if you like. It's in the description down below. That will give you 1,000 miles of free supercharging range. Um, my link is in the description. Make sure you start with it from the beginning because you can't apply the link retroactively after you've paid your deposit. All right, take care and thanks for watching.